Hello, ladies and Germans. How are you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And we're back with some more of the PDX Steel Division Normandy 44 tourney. Mm -hmm. We're into uh, round two, isn't this right? Yep, it's is uh, round two. Uh, it's oh, I was going to say we are in St. Mary Gleese as well, so we know this rather well. But go ahead, take, take it away for us. What, who do we have? Who well, do we have? On the left hand side in blue, we have Eugene as the first Polish Armour Division. And Nicholas Frick as a 352nd. As per usual, winner of this match will be heading off to the next round. Now, we just cast a game the other day um, with the polls. And I mean, mm -hmm. and we've been actually talking, and I'll say the same thing we said then. We've been seeing a lot of polls, and that's just, that's totally surprising me. How do you yeah. think this matchup's going to work right now with that 352nd? Well, in the town, it's, it's kind of a toss up, as uh, I know polls do have. You know, decent amount of infantry as well as flight support options. Mm -hmm. Well, 352nd can just ha has the same thing: decent infantry, Voss Troopen, and decent flight support, such as uh, the Panjaeger, IG-18s, lots of artillery units, etc. It's going to be an interesting matchup for sure, as this map really does play into both divisions' favor. And honestly, I'm I'm really quite excited to see how this actually plays out. Uh, well, I guess I'm a little bit concerned about this. I know, I mean, I, we are seeing a ton of infantry on the pole side, and of course the 352nd can definitely match that. But in between the two divisions, who takes that infantry fight? Um, I mean, my, my gut, immediately at least anyway, says 352nd as we get started here, but um, you, you might disagree with me. Go for it. Uh, if 352nd can get down that good old artillery game with the mortars, then he should be able to capture the town. Well, they're only bringing one mortar in right now, but we are seeing the Germans are taking a little bit more of a defensive stance. Is that mm -hmm. in recognition, you think, of the Poles, or...? Yes. Also, because you don't really have that much in terms of offensive units in A-phase for 352nd. It's all also true. anti-tank guns and you no know, Panzer Shreks, nothing really uh, too crazy in terms of, like, Panzer Three, Panzer IV rushes. I would say, although ironically, we do have a Shrek team, we do actually also have two pop guns, and we have that Panzer 35. Mm -hmm. But on the pole side of things, I mean, we do have as well both a Staghound and a Cromwell, and the yeah. Staghound, shockingly, all well, that takes anything on the map right now for the Germans. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good unit to bring out. It's nice. It's cheap. It can deal with the infantry, and it can deal with the tanks, especially those Panjaegers and whatnot, if it can get close enough. Um, Stovepipe gets into action for the Germans as that Panzer 35 takes out the Universal Carrier. I mean, first kills, but big whoop, right? Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's uh, bring out the Ron Trinity. It's definitely a good choice as, uh, well, in terms of its numbers, it brings out the big booms. And as you can see, it's pinning down the Polis infantry very effectively so far. Okay, we are going to look like it looks like the Poles are also trying to work the flanks. How do you feel about that? Do you think that Pack 38 is enough to stop, like, the Cromwell, for example? Uh, no. No, uh, Cromwell no, no, is outranging okay. it. As, True. Uh, is that outranging it right now? Uh, yes, just barely. It is just barely. Just barely. And, uh, I mean, that Cromwell on the flank, open field, gonna have a good time, really, especially considering there's not much. We do have a Panjaeger, which can stop it, but the Cromwell could somewhat effectively stun up that Panjaeger, too, you also have to realize. But, um, I think the flank's really gonna be the pose best option, really, try to move around, yeah, get the tanks rolling, and get into more open fields. Now, we were talking, uh, again, this goes back to our other cast, and guys, of course, if you haven't checked that out, uh, do. It was a nice little quick game from the Asia-Pacific region. But we were talking about how the Poles are very much a momentum-based um, division. Mm -hmm. How does that match up with the 350 seconds kind of uh, step-up offense? Yeah, uh, 350 second, if they can get like a really good solid defense line down of MGs and pack guns, it can be a real pain in the butt to penetrate. But a Polis uh, trick up their sleeve really is their sextons. As uh, really, 350 second can't outrange the sextons till C phase when it comes to artillery. Mm -hmm. And even then, SK 18s aren't great at counter battery and armored artillery units. Sure. While the Sexton can counter battery most of the 352nd stuff, including the mortar in the middle, and also deal with those pesky machine guns, pack guns, etc., yet they can bring out. Sounds about right. Now, we are going to see the Poles are getting forced back by, as you, as you have correctly pointed out, 
the Czechs and the uh, oppressed Russians. Mm -hmm. And Fairly I don't know. Time. Exactly, exactly. Will this turn into a meat grinder is the question, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> In it's, a word, yeah. It's always a meat grinder and there's a town involved. Especially when neither side really has decisive shock infantry in A phase. Now we are going to see that decisive kind of infantry attack down to the south, um, slowly starting to build here with the stag count in support. Mm -hmm. Is this enough to overwhelm the German defenses? Yeah, for sure. Once you, I mean, that's a lot of riflemen, that's just a lot of bodies in general. Mm -hmm. And there uh, was a stag count doing support. He should be able to clear a nice little path for him down south, unless that Panjiega can uh, position itself to deal with that stag count. And it looks like some more infantry is coming in as well to support yeah. that. There's some more Ostrupen. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, we're not going to see, I mean, a lot of necessarily fantastic. But it's still good. All Strupen are, uh, I mean, that's a solid 20 point unit. As they oh, do, true. They do beat out rifles at long range. I, I think, I think they do, yeah, because yeah, the MG34, yeah, even well, even with the disheartened bonus. They do and and honestly, job. frankly, they still match up pretty darn well with these Strupsy squads as well. I yeah. mean, the... the that that freaking Bren gun just does not do the damage needed to do. No, I mean you, you really need like eight Bren guns to really make him useful. Indeed, and looks like that Panzer Jaeger is gonna get into action as we speak. But is this this defensive line you were talking about a few seconds ago? Is this a good enough defensive line? Uh down south, uh I mean the Anywhere Panzer... along the line actually, because that I mean we are seeing a yeah. huge amount of a furball happening over here in the right on the town square. Uh I think town is going to hold pretty well just because of the artillery, but really it's just the uh, flanks at the moment. And if he can just knock out the tanks on the flanks, or deny them, as you see up north of the smoke play, mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful, yeah, and he should be able to hold the flanks until B phase, where he can start getting some pack 40s and stoogs and other, you know, accoutrements. Actual, actual good anti tank weaponry apart from pack 38s to, uh, really deal with this. That is the wrong problem with 352nd, is you got, you know, the pop gun pack 38, and even though the Panjaeger's, you know, it's a nice little anti-tank unit, it only has 9 AP, which isn't the uh, best in the world, and it doesn't really uh, stack up real once you get to B. True. True, though we do have a little bit of time before we do get over into B. We are going to see a mortar come down south. And I guess that is the A, the A, not the AT, but the RD you were talking about to do a few seconds before. Yep. And we've also got another mortar uh, north of the town, a bit, 81mm. Yes. And uh, if Nicholas can uh, get the artillery game down and just, you know, stun up the infantry, especially down south, that's definitely going to clear things up. Just as long as there are no sections on the field. And we're just seeing blankets of smoke coming on out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Panther Shrek is in the area. Stagon oh. might blunder into it. Oh, he is. Uh, so close. So close. That's like... Uh, that's a whisker away, man. That's like a maybe 50 meters. Here Not comes even. aligning. And track's broken. The hashtag, that's still pretty worth. Yep. Reloading, he does oh, go down. But no, he's not. Hey, immobility is fine. That pack 38 can still penetrate from that range. Yeah, and the Cyclone's kind of low on ammunition now and doesn't have the best line of sight. So yeah, that's, a, that's a good place to immobilize at a British slash American armored car. True. True. We are going to see another one being brought on into the north. This Cromwell, I mean, there's just... Where the Cromwells are, the Germans cannot be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ex especially in A-Phase. It just has that anti... Anti... The anti-anti-tank gun dominance. <laughs> um, at the same time, though, look at what remains for the Polish infantry in this town. I mean, we have just shreds of squads that are left. Half-strength mm -hmm. Streltsy. Um, Streltsy with one model left. Oh no, there's there's one squad that's got eight troops in it. Other than that, nothing. Yeah, too bad he doesn't have any uh, other vice force or artillery to help him try and take his town. Because that's really the problem. Because these mortars, you know, the Streltsy's get pinned down by the Ostrupen in a fight. And then the mortars effectively pin them, pin them down and make him worthless. Oh, Staghound gets forced to get a bailout. Oh, damn. That's a, that's a good good shot here yeah, from the Panzer and Pack 38, and knocking out those tanks and trying to stop the Polish from getting a, uh, you know, tank snowball effect is really a best bet. You know, 
There's now another Chrome Rail and another Chrome Rail just on the uh, rest and side of the town now. The Chrome Rail 6 been there a bit, a bit of time. The Chrome Rail 5 is just coming in right now, but mm. yeah. Oh man, he, and he's making an end run over here as well. Oh, oh my God. gosh, this is not going to go well. The stack, oh, I don't know, there's no AT nearby. Oh, sorry, that's exactly what I meant by that. Uh, Pack 38 does have a little bit of line of sight on that road, but they have to get awfully close for that to matter. Yeah. Rex squad coming on in, some other attendant infantry, of course, with no AT. And I don't yep. think that Staghound sees Fricks. No, he sees it. Never mind. Like Grenadier Fuhrer in the hatch down to the south. Now be a time for the Grenadier Fuhrer to pop some smoke, but uh, Nicholas is already doing it with his mortars. And yeah, Nick's been on point with the uh, smoke play this match, I have to say. Well, even he, better, too. He It seems that Eugene is just freaking out. Oh my gosh, smoke, it's time to retreat. And he does so intelligently. There's a Shrek squad just waiting for that smoke to disappear. So brilliant mm -hmm. there. And especially considering that, you know, if you can't outrange the enemy, you might as well just block your line of sight so they can't outrange you to begin with. True. It's a good point. Even, even more proper, yeah. Scout's getting into a wet noodle contest with the Grenadier Fuhrer. Yeah. I was actually watching that and... Amazing he didn't unload his off stroop in a little bit sooner as he took some shots. I don't think he saw him, unfortunately. I think yeah. he, I think the uh, scouts were able to get out of line of sight on that. Yeah. But the Streltsy right now should be shifting on in, I think, literally into that smoke. But uh, they're going to keep their distance for the moment. But uh, the main thing is Polis are uh, getting a slow and lovely plus one point advantage with a 54% riches. A rather big deal. I do like up north once again with the smoke blocking that Cromwell's line of sight, really negating its effective use. And uh, the Poles are slowly starting to break through in the town a little bit, yo. Panda 35 may be able to stop it, of all things. I don't know about that. We are going to see your favorite vehicle in the world coming out for the Poles. Sexton? Yes, sir. Oh GS coming to the west side of the town right now, and like you said, there is not much the Germans are going to be able to do to counter-battery this. No, no. I mean, it's getting a little bit too close for my liking. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where he brought it that close. Especially well, considering... I under... Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please. I was just going to just be cantankerous in objection, but go for it. But I understand, you know, you just want to have it close to the front line, but in this sort of setup... Ray, you can easily outrange him by just having that section another 400, 600 meters back. You know, you might as well just have it back, yeah. So you, you can counter battery AM and they can't counter battery you. True, but I was thinking to myself at the same time as we see more and more Austrian being poured on in. Um, Maybe what he's looking to do is to reduce some of that shell fall. The, 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 the malice to shell accuracy. I mean, the greater, the farther away you shoot, the more inaccurate you're going to be. Okay. Yes? Yeah. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, he's trying to get close enough to take care of that. Of course, as soon as I say that, what does he shoot at? He doesn't shoot near the front. No, sir, he shoots for the freaking Pack yeah. 38. Tries to knock out his AT gun so his uh, tanks can break through. True. True. Now, we have Kubelwagens coming on in just to the east of the town, and I might be wrong, but I don't think that that's not Austrian. I think I might be Pioneers, Khan. That might be accurate. And that might and, and, be a good idea. Exactly. Exactly. Those guys yeah. with those satchel charges are causing hell yeah. for everyone on out there. Yeah. There's definitely the airsoft spam coming on through, as might be expected. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's usually 50-50 uh, wherever you see airsoft spam for uh, 350 second. It works pretty well because you get, like, one card with uh, 10 guys, which is pretty good bang for your buck. But uh, some people just negate it and maybe just get another card of Grenadiers. It's, uh... Yes, oh, sir. 50, the Pios. 50. Those brave souls should be charging on in. Take out that Streltsy. Oh, gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna reduce that. Get out. Oh, he, there we go. There we go. Oh, Look he's at in that. The, oh, man, that is aggressive. That is bloody nutty right here. Here it comes again. Here's going to be a surrender. Which is going to really... Oh, never mind. Uh, no, wait. he's in command. Grandy Fury just barely has him there. Okay, never yep. mind. Oof. Got got him on the lasso. Yeah, it ain't going to be no retreat. No step back down for the Pioneer. Yeah. I'm trying to think about how to quote Star Fox for a second. <laughs> Do a barrow? 
I was worried for a moment. <laughs> I will not lie. I will not lie. I shot that frog down whenever I had the chance. Yep. Yep. I don't care if you made my stuff better. I shot that guy down. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I always see. found that game hard when I was a kid. Junker coming on in. Oh, man. This guy's going to have a beautiful oh, shot over here. Sexton? Yes, he is. Oh. He's got the gun run. He's aligning. Track's broken. Ammo explosion. Yeah, there we go. And that's how you knock out the Sexton there. Yeah, well, even was... if the Junker goes down now because the Hurricane, and he will probably go down. I don't know. I don't know. The AA unit is nearby. Oh my gosh, I, I, I didn't even see, I wasn't even looking at the, the, the flak rear thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's definitely going to get out. That's a big pick. Uh, Falling back, falling back. He goes down. Oh, that was so close. I think he just, I think that flag rolling just lost line of sight due to a building, maybe for a brief second. But uh, it's definitely still cost efficient, I think. Just knocking out that Saxon is. Well, important. even if it's not cost efficient, that's just a beautiful opportunity. Of yeah. course, we are going to see Howitzer's being brought onto the field now. Bedford truck just coming in yeah. that center south portion. And but actually, nice, it's a 25 pounders in the north. I'm sorry, go for it. But the nice thing about 25 pounders is you can actually counter battery um, some rock True. if you get in range. Now, I'm a little surprised to see that from the German side, we aren't going to see that artillery that you were talking about before. Yeah, no uh, no neighbor offers was a little bit sad because, uh, you know, neighbor offers town, and it means like bread and butter. True. True. Black Beerling blows up spectacularly, and I. Even though we don't get a nice little close shot mm. of that. It, this game again. We've been talking about this on cast, off cast. It's just it's so beautiful. Yeah, and that Chroma was in a lovely position because he's pretty much denying reinforcements into the town. Somewhat, he only has limited line of sight on the road, but once you kind of get past the flanks here, Khan, and you can control that road, you control the town. True. Yeah. Um, I am surprised to see that this 120 mil has exactly two smoke rounds left, which is just uh, inspiring to a certain mean. Uh, yeah. You know. I mean, how often do you see artillery units use up all their smoke munitions? Well, smoke and HE, for that matter. I know. He's been a busy boy at 120mm. <laughs> he has indeed. Uh, but Polish Rush is coming towards that town. I, I don't think Frick has the lines to stop him at the moment. Oh, God. That is... Yeah, it's just going to be a lot of Strotskis rushing into the town. Surprise me. I haven't seen any uh, Dragoonies, which would be pretty uh... useful. They, they were. I think we had a couple of squats that early on, but they just they don't have the same kind of staying power. When against the Streltsy, I think isn't that just a better, more cost-efficient option? Yeah, yeah, because it is. They they get more of them per card. I mean, more of them per squad, and they mm. kind of have roughly the same arm, and you just don't have the P out, and they're cheaper. But you know, I do well, like having. Well, I do like having the half tracks. And against the three fifty second as well, you don't really need to have that that P out. No, and also they don't have, especially against Ostrupen, they don't really have much Panzerfaust capability, so, you know, a rest on a half track or two definitely helps out a lot. That machine gun makes a big deal when fighting against German MGs. You're actually, you were arguing from that way still. I thought you were arguing it from my side for a second. I was like, oh, okay, I see what he's getting at. <laughs> um, so I actually, Frick is running out of ammunition on every single one of his artillery pieces. His mortar to the south is, on, is completely Winchester. 120 mil is, is Winchester. There's one mortar that has munitions. Other than that, a lot of his troops are running low on munitions. Yep, and there we got two 25 pounders on the field here, field here for Eugene, and they are just pinning down everything that he sees and denying Nicholas from getting into really any good positions. I mean, down south, it's just not good yet for Nick. Um, I, I, this might be a dark humor kind of moment, but you do see like Grenadier Fuhrer in the town. Click on that Ostrupen squad just to the north of him. Going to do if you're a town. Skip. He has now 75 rounds of machine gun. Oh, ammo, God. But he has nothing. <laughs> that's, some, that's some Stalingrad stuff, right? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Pretty but he's fighting for the wrong side, comrades. Oh, yeah, there's no Pathos house. He, oh my gosh, I've actually never seen an infantry unit be completely out of ammunition on every single thing, unit. Like, yeah. every single weapon. That does not happen. That does not... I mean, that... And, and the Ostrupen's still alive. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that's even more true. I, I suppose I should have yeah. focused on that. And he's attacking with it now, with no ammo. I mean, I've fixed him Bayonet's con. 
Well, oh. he, he can't take out that Streltsy unit if it can get to it, to the north northwest of him. No, he can't, uh. he can't, though, because he has no ammo. Like, no. Uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> Too bad I don't simulate that. That'd well, be pretty funny. If you, it'd be pretty funny if you could actually see it. Oh, they got grenades, maybe. But that's only against vehicles, never mind. No, no, but at the same time, you can do hand-to-hand -hand when you go into buildings. You should be able to do hand-to-hand -hand when you run into the open field, right? I don't think it works. Oh, man. I'm I'm, I'm depressed, I then. I know. It'd be cool if you get, like... I, I don't know. It's gonna be, it sounds going to sound a little bit dumb, but... You know, get, like, troops, like, fixed bayonets, and they do, like, a charge where they run 50... Pretty much Bandai charges from Red Orchestra 2 is what I want. Well, that's when we bring the Japanese divisions in. Perfect. Yeah, you know, get Perfect. some... There you uh, go. Cannot be pinned. Get some, uh, like, knee mortars and, uh, some mine grenades and we're good to go. And samurai hey, swords. Those, 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 uh, knee mortars were no joke. No, especially, especially, it's a bit off topic here. But if you've ever played a Red Orchestra 2 match and the Japanese side has players who know how to use knee mortars, it's almost impossible to do anything effective because if you're in a position, you just get mm -hmm. knee mortared. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's, it's yeah. practically close air, like not close air support. Wow. It's, it's, <laughs> um, it's, it's, practically it's technically coming fire. from the air, Colin. So you're not, you're not <laughs> so you're technically correct. You mean I'm, I'm not completely wrong? Just mostly. Just technically correct. Um, facing in a couple of seconds yep. here, but uh, plus two is happening. It looks like Eugene is going to take this one pretty easily. Yeah. Um. He's... No, but I mean that was practically direct fire. Those things were what a couple hundred rounds, maybe. Uh, excuse me, a couple hundred yards. Mm -hmm. range so those are not great distances here no but uh no it's massive strutty push wow yeah. what and this is what i mean uh polis guy i mean just uh look eugene he has momentum he has a lot of tanks in the field a lot of infantry in the field artillery on the field and if you look at uh nicholas i mean he has the yank panther which is nice and all but uh it's just one tank Unfortunately, one tank doesn't save the day, usually. Not in this game, anyway. No, not in this game, no. If this is Men of War Soul Squad 2, maybe bringing out that King Tiger could save your butt and run flank, but, uh, not in this game. That is a tall order, nevertheless, though. Yeah. And then you lose the King Tiger because the dude of a flamethrower or a flamethrower is your engine and you blow up. And oh, you exactly. Just, and you just realize you spent 15 minutes saving up for it doing nothing and your whole team is mad. Um, I do have Good to make times. a note, by the way. You definitely know it's over when Eugene's bringing in the FU anti-air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three of them. Three of them. Not yep. for any particular reason. He's not even really putting them in advanced positions. He's just kind of keeping them. Yeah. Just just some sort of. postings. Actually, oh, he's actually just bringing out postings. Not even tri-postings or, like, the Crusader. That's an interesting choice because uh, I wouldn't really deem those units effective unless you're playing 6 Airborne because they have the veteran sheet. But look at, I mean, look at this right now. Um, we were talking about the, the infantry matchup between the Streltsy and the Ostrupen, and we, mm -hmm. we, I don't want to say we had a definitive answer from this, but at the same time, I kind of, I can't help but wonder if the infantry had been present in equal numbers, but that had been a more even match. I think Nicholas has needed to use more CQC guys, because he could have got some Stormtroopers, and if he had his Pioneers and maybe some better positions and more of them in the town, he could have got some good, uh, grenades off True. but i think he just relied only on ostrup and really in that town and it can last you for a decent amount but when they're out of ammo and outnumbered <laughs> yeah and yeah you're gonna lose and they will run out of ammo yeah and now just looking at it's a sherman mark 5 coming around the south flank of the town gonna be able to pretty much cut off reinforcements there was one squad and, uh yeah we go Yep, the last couple of seconds here, so congratulations to you, Jin. And, Nicholas, you've had, you've played a, a pretty good tournament so far, I won't lie, but, um... Wow. Wow. Polish Brigade. Well done. Yeah, they're, uh... There's the tap out. There's the tap out, and, uh, Eugene is taking a victory by, yeah, like a 900 kill death advantage. Yeah, and I, this goes back to the, oh, the other game, too, as well. I don't know, maybe I'm just having observational bias or blindness, but it never seems like the Germans are really taking that much of that much damage, I guess. In terms of uh, early on? Well, I mean, more or less later. I mean, early on, yeah, going the first eight minutes or so, it's about yeah. a two-to-one kill in favor of the Poles. Mm-hmm. 
But then later on, we don't really see a bunch of German deaths until about minute 15, and then another span from 18 to about 19. Yeah. I just think... <coughs> I just think, uh... Like, Nicholas, he, he it's a simple matter of momentum. The momentum on the flanks is really dominated by Eugene, by having the tanks here, and mm -hmm. really stopping Nick from doing any advances. And in the town, it just became that awful, bloody meat grinder. And... Pretty much Eugene managed to out meet grind Nick. In that well, I, I can't help but wonder if maybe Nicholas didn't apply enough units the flanks early on. Yeah, at the same time, you know, when it comes to momentum on the flanks, he doesn't have like that much in terms of aggressive units, and especially against Pose, where he could, you know, rip out Cromwells, support Cromwells, stag hounds. Recon Stuart, Stuart. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really quite tough to uh, be aggressive on those flanks. Maybe down south where it's more forestry, and mm -hmm. try to maybe do some infantry anti-tank gun play to try and capture it. But uh, in the northern flank, I'm just thinking it wouldn't have gone well if he tried to attack here. Really defending it was his best bet. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Eugene now moves on to uh, round number three. Mm -hmm. Nicholas unfortunately goes home, and we're getting closer and closer to crowning ourselves a uh, a PDX tournament champion, aren't we? Yep. Another what? Another two rounds, I think, before we get to the semis. Um, I'm not entirely sure where we are I overall think, in the bracket. Uh, I think this is uh, yeah, like another round or two, and then we're into the semifinals. And I think this tournament will probably be done sometime early January, in terms of I... the time frame. Definitely looking forward to the climax of it all. Yeah. But all right, uh, I think it's going to do it for me. How about you there, Ryan? Yeah, I'm good. Sounds good. Folks, you all take it easy. Have yourselves a great day. This is Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.